Hello students, we will continue with the chapter 2 video by looking at the last part of this, by, um, looking at percentiles and quartiles as measures of variability. Percentiles and quartiles are very similar. They divide data into sections. Percentiles divide data into groups of, you know, um, percents or tens. Quartiles and divides data into uh, four different groups. So you may have um, not, you may not be as familiar with percentiles and quartiles, but you have all been, those numbers have been applied to you um, in terms of if, if you've ever done any aptitude or graduate tests, um, they are going to give you a percentile score or a quartile score. Uh, measures of newborn, uh, newborns, um, for example, are probably the more widely known use of percentiles. Um, you may um, you know, a newborn who's in the 80th percentile for weight, basically that would, that would indicate that that newborn is um, um, heavier than 80% of all children born at that time or within a, um, a standard set of time. 20% uh, of all newborns would be would weigh more than that newborn child. A uh, newborn who is in the 90th percentile for weight, likewise would be taller than um, 90% of all newborns born at a certain time period, likewise 10% would of them would be taller than that newborn. So the benefit of a percentile, it gives you a ranking position. Uh, in terms of like if you were to score 80% uh, on a test, you have no idea with that number alone if you are above average, how much above average you are. So one of the first things you do when you get a test result back is you want to find out what the range was or what the standard deviation was so you can have an idea of and what the average was so you have an idea of where you actually placed. If someone were to say that you scored in the 80th percentile for an exam then that means that you scored better than 80 percent of all the people. 20 percent likewise would have scored better than you but you did score better than 80 percent of all the people um, who took that test. Um, it, does, it doesn't tell you what, how many you got right or wrong. You could end up, you could have ended up with, you know, scoring 63% on a test, but still scored an 80th percentile, or um, scored, you know, 92% on a test. So um, I want to show you how to calculate and find percentiles <coughs> using uh, pen and paper, and then I'll look at how to find percentiles on using Excel so you can actually verify your work and you can in essence do more practice type questions. So the first thing we're going to look at is this uh, formula. This gives us, this formula here is only needed when we are trying to find percentiles on paper. So what we will do is we go into the um, temperature data set that we have on page um, in your course package. We're going to look at some examples on page 34. So let's go into Excel. Here's your data set. This data set is back from uh, chapter 1. Let's just see if I can give you a quick reference to that. That is on page 10. Temperature of the last 50 days. What we're going to do is calculate various percentiles. So here's our percentile rank formula. So this is a multi-step process in order to find percentiles on paper. We are going to first of all find the 50th percentile. This is on page 34. Then we'll find the 75th um, and then the 88th. Or maybe for the uh, lack of time we'll find the 50th and then the 88th because the 75th was very is very similar to the 50th in terms of the process. The 88th uh, has a slight adjustment at the end. So the 50th percentile, first thing you want to do is um, we're going to put in these numbers here. There's three different sections for this percentile rank process. We want the 50th percentile, um, so the percentile divided by 100, n minus 1, there's 50 pieces of data, 50 minus 1 is 49, and at the very end we add 1 to this. So our answer is going to be 0.5, times 49 plus 1 and there is um, our first answer we need in this process 25.5 now this percentile rank number 
25.5 gives us a position of where the percentile is. Doesn't tell us um, or doesn't indicate the final answer. But the data here is a, is in um, order, ascending order from smallest to largest, which on using pen and paper, that's the order it has to be in. And there's 10 pieces of paper, um, data going across. So we know that, you know, there's 10, 20, this value here is 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So the 25th piece of data is 16. And the 26th data item is 17. So because we get a percentile rank or position 25.5, we want to find the value, um, the whole number below and whole number above that, uh, that rank position. So the 25th position, 26th position is right in there. Um, because they are not the same, we have to go into this into this process. We need to calculate the difference between the values indicated by that rank position. So the difference is one. Um, next thing we want to do is take a look at what is the decimal number of the percentile rank value. The decimal is 0.2 is 0.5 here. It is 25.5. We only want the decimal part. So let's just change, uh, let's bold that, yellow that. So that's where that number is coming from. If this number of 25.5 was 25.3, we would put 0.3 down in here. Um, the next part we want to do is basically take the difference, multiply it by the decimal. So 0.5 times 1, oops, 0.5. With that multiplied number of 0.5, we always add it to the lower value. Um, in our, um, based on our percentile rank value. So we're going to have 16 plus 0.5, which equals then 16.5. So the 50th percentile is six, um, equals 16.5. So if that would mean that 16 or 50 percent of the day of the temperatures in the last 50 days were above 16.5 and 50 were less than 16.5. Just as a as a interesting bit of information here, keep in mind that the, the median is the same as the 50th percentile, so we can calculate the median by using that the function we learned about. 15 should give us a value of 16.5. The median is a middle point. So the middle point is um, 20, the 50 pieces of data. The middle point is going to be between six, the 25th and 26th value spots. The average between 16 and 17 is 16.5, which is basically the process that we did here. We did it slightly different. But just keep in mind that uh, 50th percentile uh, I can't type today, really can't type today, um, equals the median. That's something noteworthy. Okay, what we're going to do now is calculate um, on page 34 it asks us to calculate the 88th percentile. So the 88th percentile, we go back to this percentile rank process and we substitute in 88. It's still 50 pieces of data, so it's still 50 minus 1, and then we add 1 at the end. So I don't have this linked, so let's go here. We're going to uh, 88 divided by 100 is 0.88 times 49 plus 1 gives us a value of 44.12. So remember, 44.12 tells us where that percentile is going to be. So we need a whole number below it. So we need the 44th position and then the 45th position. So let's go find that 44th position. 10, 20, 30, 40, 
41, 42, 43, 44, and 45. So it's right in here. Let's change color slightly. Let's go with the blue. So the 44th position is 25. The 45th position is 27. The difference is 2. 27 minus 25. The decimal is 0.12. Is 0.12. Um, we multiply the difference by with a decimal, so we're going to get 0.24 as our um, product, and we add it to the lowest value. So we're going to change this: 25 plus um, 0.24, which we get 25.24. So the 88th percentile is 25.24, which means that 88% of um, the temperatures were um, below that value. 12% of the temperatures were above that value, approximately, because we're working on a relatively small data set as well. Um, now, if you wanted to verify your work, what you can do is, in Excel, we can enter this function. And this is something that I have shown in the lab uh, videos. So it's equal percentile. Bracket, the array is all the numbers. Comma, K is the percentile listed as a decimal, so 0.88. And there is our percentile, 25.24. So then you can go ahead and calculate the 91st percentile. Do it on paper, and then in Excel, you'd enter equals percentile the array, comma, 0.91, for example, and that will give you that percentile. Um, quartiles are just special percentiles. Um, first quartile is 25th percentile. The second quartile is, is the same as the 50th percentile, which is the same as the median. So keep that in mind. The interquartile range is the, the size of the middle 50% of the data. So it's Q3 minus Q1, or the 75th percentile minus the 25th percentile. Or if you want to get crazy, it's, for example, it's the 75th percentile minus the first quartile. Coefficient of variance is the standard deviation. That's that value divided by the average. And we multiply that by 100%. So we're going to look at some examples. This, uh, this example is listed on page 35 of your uh, course package. There is um, four different scenarios we're going to go over. And just have to find where I put that. There we go, right in here this part here. Um, so we have the top executives have an average salary of 250000 standard deviation of 10000 The formula is uh, standard deviation over the average multiplied by 100%. Same thing with lower level employees. Their average salary is 32. Much smaller standard deviation. Performance ratings for a group of employees, 3.5 and 0.25. And then selling prices of homes in Red Deer um, with that. The, the benefit of the CV is that it allows us to compare how spread out data sets are when the values are not the same. Um, you know, looking at the top executives, lower level employees, um, lower level employees have a much smaller standard deviation compared to the top executives. So that may indicate that the top executives have a wider dispersion of salaries. Well, when we factor in the relative small um, size of the average, we, we would indicate that based on the CV, uh, that indicates that their salaries are actually more spread out. And when we look at performance ratings, even though these numbers are really small, 3.5 and 0.25, it gives us a CV, CV value of 7.1%. That would indicate that that is performance ratings are more spread out than top executives and even selling prices of selling prices of homes, even though those numbers are um, relatively a lot uh, bigger. So that's the benefit of using the coefficient of variance. And that is it for chapter two.